the non-violent approach is, I think, about the most difficult approach in the world, especially nowadays where weapons are getting more and more powerful and uh, people get more and more dependent on weapons in order to get what they want. But uh, we are we are convinced that the non-violent approach is the best. We are convinced that in the long run it pays off, even if, uh, if, if the, even if the run is actually longer because it is it is a non-violent approach. For example, if we consider a country like India, where which was very much influenced by Gandhiji's non-violence uh, philosophy, you can see how how clear the military has kept away from politics. There, India has had many, many political upheavals and it has faced many problems and it probably will have many problems to face in the future. But I think this, this seed of non-violent non that was planted before independence has helped them a great deal in resolving their problems in as democratic a way as is possible under the circumstances. So we want to keep to the non-violent approach. We find that there is a vast difference in the attitude of a man with a gun in his hand and that of one without a gun in his hand. When a man doesn't have a gun in his hand, or a woman for the matter, uh, he or she tries harder to use his or her mind, uh, her sense of compassion and her intelligence to work out a solution. But if you put a gun into that person's hand, the gun is always there to use so that the the urge to depend more on intellectual considerations, the, the urge to, to exercise one's intelligence and compassion more becomes that much less. So we think that the non-violent approach is best for our country. We want to cut this vicious cycle that has gone on in Burma for some time of people trying to change uh, polit the political scene through the power of the gun.